Hi, my name's Henry Lucas. I'm the Education Director at the Spelman Museum of uh, Stamps and Postal History, which is located on the campus of uh, Regis College. And uh, this is a, a video production that we do uh, to kind of educate both collectors and non-collectors of stamps about how interesting stamps are and how they're connected to history and current events and uh, famous uh, people. Uh, we've been doing the show for almost uh, four years, but it uh, turns out uh, we've changed the format a little bit for the year 2020. We're going to make shorter shows on certain themes and uh, keep them uh, on links to our uh, website. And we're hoping that with the uh, shorter uh, length, uh, we can get more people to watch the show and, uh, and hopefully you'll learn a little bit about sta stamps and encourage them to come out and uh, visit us uh, at the museum. I should mention we also do a uh, educational calendar, which is really a uh, dates of, of each month, uh, which tells about a historic event on that date, which has a stamp uh, commemorating it. And if you'd like to get a, a monthly uh, receive a monthly uh, calendar, just to email us. The email address is on the bottom of the screen, and we'd be happy to uh, to send that uh, calendar uh, out to you. So before we get into uh, this week's, uh, this show's uh, theme, two thing, two little shout outs. First, uh, there's a new book that's published. It's called Revolutionary, Revolutionary Networks. And it's about, uh, it's done by Joseph Adelman, who was a speaker here at the museum uh, a couple of years ago. And he talked about getting the book ready. And uh, he is an associate uh, professor at uh, Framingham State. Uh, and uh, the book actually talks about how letters were mailed before the revolution, when there were no stamps. There were very few post offices and very few uh, routes to deliver the mail, but it really is explains how important mail was uh, before the revolution and how the mail actually got around all of the uh, 13 colonies and over to uh, England. Uh, there is a very good uh, blog that you can listen to him. The uh, website's too long, so email us and we'd be happy to send you contacts for the, uh, for the blog. But it, it's a very interesting to, to see how... Uh, Complicated delivering mail was back before the revolution. The other thing we want to give a little shout out to our former executive director, David Ball. Uh, he's an astrophilatelist, and uh, in this month's or the January issue of the American Philatelist, which is kind of like the, uh, the Bible magazine for uh, stamp collectors, uh, has a nice big article there about uh, collecting stamps that have to do with uh, all the uh, rocket shops shoots to the moon, to Mars, and to other places. So uh, if you're at all interested in space, um, we'd be happy to uh, send you a, a copy of that article, too. Uh, one other uh, little piece of stamp news that was in the, uh, on the web. Turns out over at Harvard University, where we guess not too many students are sending letters anymore, the uh, undergraduate council voted a grand total of $400 to provide free postage stamps to uh, students starting in, uh, in January and uh, they'll be able to receive the free stamps at where they pick up their mail uh, and in the Science Center where they don't usually have uh, stamps. So we just thought it was kind of interesting that uh, uh, some students are still uh, sending letters and that uh, they're being encouraged to do it by the undergraduate council. So we thank them for giving that little push for, uh, for mail. So this uh, short segment that we're doing, uh, kind of focusing on some trivia questions, and uh, we hope that uh, this might encourage you to do a little research and find out about that. Our last trivia question asked, who was the name a king, a king who has appeared on a United States stamp, a real king? There's been a bunch of kind of phony kings, you might say. Uh, we've had the uh, uh, Lion King has been. Elvis, of course, the king of, uh, of rock and roll has been on a stamp. Dr. Martin Luther King, Nat King Cold. We've had King Penguins on the stamps. Uh, king uh, Friday the 13th, if you know who that is, that's uh, the king who appeared on Mr. Rogers' show. He's on a stamp. We have some royalty like Queen Isabella and Princess Grace of Monaco and, of course, even the King of Hearts from a deck of cards. Those are all kings on stamps, but they're not real kings. So we asked uh, who uh, is a real king on a stamp, and it turns out it goes to Hawaii. And I have a little trouble pronouncing this name, but it's, it's King Kamahamahea, uh, King Hamahamahea I. And if you know Jackie Gleason, it sounds like a hama hama hama, if you remember the old Jackie Gleason show. But he was the first king of Hawaii, born into a family of uh, great chiefs. And uh, he ruled for a long time, and he used chiefs as effective local rulers. So anyway, there's a big statue of him, not there in Hawaii, but there's also one in the Capitol building in the United States Capitol in Washington, D.C. It's the only king uh, featured in the Capitol, and he's the only king 
on a uh, United States stamp, and you can see the image behind me. And we had a few people uh, got the correct answer and were running their names there on the bottom of uh, the screen. So let's get into the questions of trivia for this segment of our show. Uh, there's a lot of children on stamps. You can see a few of those behind me. Uh, but we want to know what the first American stamp was to feature children. So if you know that answer, send it in to us at info at spellman.org. Uh, the second one is, uh, I'm going to name five towns or cities, uh, Hartford, Connecticut, Richmond, Virginia, Portland, Oregon, Memphis, Tennessee, and Kansas City, Missouri. There's an interesting philatelic connection between those five cities. So I think you can uh, match them all up with something related to a stamp issue. Uh, that'd also be an answer uh, you uh, can send us. Uh, if you look on the comic pages between, uh, let's say, 1963 and 1983, uh, there's a little postal connection. There was a family in the uh, cartoon strip, and their last name was a zip code. Uh, the kids were all named numbers, and their family name was a zip code. So if you know what that zip code is and uh, why this uh, family had that last name, you can also uh, send that in to us. And if you're a Netflix uh, fan, uh, one of the series on Netflix actually featured, uh, had a short, maybe a minute or two little part of the episode, had to do with a stamp. So if you've been watching Netflix and remember seeing that, uh, uh, send that answer in to us. And if you're a, uh, also a Netflix fan, there's a movie, an excellent movie called The Two Popes. And there's a little stamp connection in that movie too. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, I highly recommend it. And if you have seen it, uh, can you think back to where stamps were, were mentioned in that? And uh, well, the one last uh, little trivia question has to do with a, this stamp that was issued, as you can see it behind me, but for uh, Edith uh, uh, Piaf and Miles Davis. There's a little technology question dealing with this stamp. And uh, if you know what I'm getting at in that, you can send your uh, answers in on that. So, so those are our uh, trivia questions, part of this trivia uh, section. So. Uh, uh, if you've uh, got any of those answers, we'd be happy to send you a little prize uh, for sending in your answers, and our next uh, segment will uh, be uh, publishing the answers. So thanks for watching. I hope we can get to come out to the museum, mention you've seen this uh, segment, and uh, we'll give you some uh, discount on the admission. And don't forget for asking for that calendar. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.